All right, and for uh, the last part of the series, um, I wanted to start off uh, getting right into the thick of it after uh, my best friend's untimely suicide on the first day of my uh, second year of uh, university. Uh, I decided uh, pretty much then and there that I was done with school. Um, I was taking these online courses and uh, things were... Uh, Things weren't going very well for me. Uh, it profoundly impacted me um, and my friend circle. Uh, it never really recovered after that. Our, our big sort of posse group quickly diminished from there um, into different directions. Uh, and um, so that friend that I uh, went to try to recover the phone with, I had started to hang out with him more and more uh, in those, uh, last months and uh so we were always uh hanging out and uh he had his uh girlfriend and and we would just go around causing mischief and um you know smoking pot and doing stuff like that and uh he also was a a writer as well and uh he's a really creative guy but um he also uh liked to uh to double cross people he thought it was fun um which uh, eventually led to our uh, falling out on our own. But um, uh, as the semester rolled on and I was uh, haphazardly uh, paying attention to online classes as I was uh, really feeling uh, depressive um, and uh, really just uh, un uncomfortability as I uh, went through my day-to-day -day life at this point, um, I really didn't have any direction. I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, I thought, uh, thought about death quite frequently, um, and not in the taking my own life sense, but just uh, the concept of it, the, the mortality of, of your own, uh, the backdrop, if you will, the death driver, as if we want to talk about Deleuze, <laughs> but, um, uh, it was about that time, though, that uh, I decided that I, I was going to drop out. Um, and uh, funny enough, though, uh, my grandmother, uh, she, uh, um, towards the uh, towards the fall into the winter, uh, she had a there was a a dispute over. Uh, property uh, of, a, of a deceased relative in, in our family and um, my grandmother was quite upset over the whole situation and uh, she came back after uh, visiting them uh, in this dispute um, and uh, I th I, the, the stress of it was uh, too much for her and uh, she, she passed away. Um, she was rather young to pass away as well. Uh, she wasn't the epitome of um, health. She she was a little bit uh, overweight from uh, you know living the kind of housewife lifestyle and going towards retirement age and um, I think also just the uh, modern uh, nutrition and uh, this kind of junk food lifestyle that we've all become accustomed to in America now uh, kind of sweeps up and, and takes you by storm and uh, this is no different here but uh, I think that the stress of the situation really uh, affected her and uh, so while uh, it was I had uh, procrastinated through my semester I still had to finish school and so my grandmother was was dying uh, in the hospital as I uh, finished school to hit this deadline because I kept pushing it off. And uh, so uh, my second year, uh, first semester, was just a total wash. My best friend died at the start of the semester on the first day. And by the uh, end of that semester, I was uh, burying my grandmother. Uh, she was dying. Um, so it, it was a it was a particularly uh, troublesome time. It was it was a time of loss, a time of mourning, 
Um, and uh, I think uh, definitely the most difficult time of my life. Now, um, well, before I talk about this next person, uh, you know, during the that partying phase that I had um, after my in, in the summer and uh, fall of my my first year of college, uh, in between there I had met this girl and uh, she was a, a quite a promiscuous young lady, to say the least. Um, she had no problem. Uh, having multiple sexual partners at a time. And I decided to just you know, notch my belt and lose my virginity to her one night. Uh, we would talk off and on, um, but she wasn't uh, interested in, in, in dating, I don't think, really, at the time. Uh, and nor was I uh, with her, really, uh, in retrospect. But uh, I had no experience with uh, women prior to this, not even uh, kissing. I, I knocked off all of the, all of the proverbial uh, check marks just in this one uh, night. And it wasn't pleasant, it was not a good experience, but I got it done, I got, and it didn't even feel, uh, it didn't even feel real, it, it felt kind of, there was that sort of, okay, I got this done, I'm not a virgin anymore, I'm grown up now, but, uh, you know, it doesn't really, uh, not to say that it doesn't necessarily matter, but it doesn't feel the same if, you know, it's something that you and your friends uh, also indulged in. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it was, it was kind of, it was just awkward. And I would, I would take it back if, if I had the choice. And she probably would too. It was probably not a very good sexual experience for her, if I'm being honest. But... I got it done, and so I, I used that experience. Uh, in the meantime, uh, this was about the time where I decided to launch my channel page, which a lot of people who were watching this probably know me from or originally met me at. Um, Facebook and, and memetics were starting to take off culturally, and I just decided that I was just bored and I wanted to, to make me... And, and, and post comedy and so I made this uh, parody page that were these were really popular you know 10 years ago and uh, I actually was getting hits and, and uh, I got a couple thousand likes on this page that I just ran by myself I would tell stories of my life and and you know similar to the situation of of my college partying days and uh, just posting old school uh, bad luck Brian memes and, and shit like that. Uh, this was before pages got all corporate and, and marketed and sold out. There's actual genuine people creating uh, content for people to enjoy out there. And I was one of them and I was proud of that. I remember my analytics. Uh, I hit almost a million uh, Facebook users in one particular month where I really took off. And it was uh, good times and it was... Uh, an outlet for me to use during this uh, poor period of time in my life. And during that meantime, I uh, met a different girl uh, at a party one night, and I'll never forget, she was like washing her, her, it was in the middle of late summer, it probably was like, you know, in the 4th of July in, in, the, in the summer, and she was uh, hosing her feet, and she was totally embarrassed because I, I was just like kind of watching her. And uh, that was that was the extent of our interaction that night. And uh, she had heard of me uh, from our mutuals, and uh, had an interest in me for you know whatever reason. I was uh, pretty frumpy. Uh, she had a cute face. Um, we were both on the heavier side, admittedly, but. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, I th she had like a Facebook post or something, and I decided to, you know, jump into her inbox. It had been my first time really trying to uh, talk to a girl in a while. I, I, I didn't handle rejection well, and I got rejected by this other girl, and so I started to talk to her, and we really hit it off, and after we hung out in person for the first time, um, it was actually kind of funny. Uh, we hung out every day at my house almost for a, a week or two, and uh, you know I was so nervous, and 
uh, really afraid to actually have my first real uh, girlfriend or someone that wants to actually spend a lot of time with you and not in that weird uh, other dynamic uh, relationship I had with that prior girl. Uh, that didn't mean much in retrospect. But this was different. Uh, this was my first real love. And um, so I was nervous. And it was after like two weeks of hanging out. She finally was, are you, are you going to fucking kiss me? Uh, and so I remember uh, we, uh, we touched each other. And uh, that was basically, I think, from the chemistry from that. And seeing that I wasn't just a total frump. Uh, I could do it. Uh, she decided, okay, we can we can date, <laughs> and uh, I dated her for it was uh, almost two years, and she helped me get my job, and uh, she really gave me structure to my life uh, in a time that I really needed it. Uh, I, I had lost that kind of friend circle, and um, you know, in the meantime, I was still trying to write hip hop. Uh, music and and I was managing this channel page. Uh, she didn't like it. She really wanted me to stop because uh, she probably thought it was embarrassing and just a waste of time. Um, but yeah, I was kind of uh, meshing with uh, my personality. I, I people had knew me for my uh, page in real life as well, and saw my kind of reach and. Uh, I would even get you know, asked about it in real life once in a while. Uh, this was mainly just friends who who already knew me anyway, so it wasn't like I was getting like stopped or anything because it was a anonymous uh, page. But I self-doxed anyway in the end because I, I just never really gave a shit anyway. Um, these are all jokes that I had no problem telling. Um, but in the meantime, uh, intellectually, I, I continued to kind of go down this road of social conscious and trying to mesh it with my music together. And uh, somewhere in that time, my friend circle as well started to get into uh, the psychedelic world. And we were taking LSD and, and mushrooms and trying to pick up the universe and its origins. And this was something that obviously was profoundly interesting to me when I was younger in, in my Catholic school days, uh, trying to find the origins of life and, and its meanings. And um, uh, it's, it's something I used to daydream about in math class uh, as I would fail. And uh, so I would take psychedelics and people would enjoy taking them with me because I would always uh, articulate you know, what what is life and uh, ask these sort of questions. and. And I would articulate stuff and we would look at the sky and, you know, do all the classic LSD uh, ways of seeing morphology inside of objects and how they kind of have this structure within the structure of, of, of essence in an Aristotelian sense, I suppose. Um, there's kind of a vibrant... Uh, I remember in particular, we had this set of curtains at this house we were living in. Uh, by the way, we, we all... Uh, we all decided to, to get this house together uh, that was outside of my elementary uh, school um, that, I, that I grew up at. So in that kind of sense, it was kind of nice but bad at the same time because I wasn't really proud of the lifestyle I was living. Uh, I, was, I felt pretty vacuous doing all of these different altering uh, substances and, and, and crushing towards them. And uh, I dropped out of school as well. I, I, was, I was quite lost. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, I was bent on, on recording music. And, and so we were starting to actually record and, and put music out. And people would actually play it. Uh, we never really had a problem getting views per se. But uh, it's about actually getting people to actually share your content is the secret. So when you just have, you know, your same fan base, but it never really grows or, or does anything or gets off the ground, uh, it can be frustrating. And I'm as, uh, but overall, uh, you know, when I was making music, uh, I kind of always felt uh, out of place with it in the sense that, you know, rhyming is a very difficult thing to actually do to make the stories I wanted to make out of it. And I was... I felt kind of restricted in that sense. 
and uh, you know, they're my my friends still to this day are, are making music and and, and still you know, chasing those aspirations, and uh, you know, I I definitely loved that period of my life of, of making music with them. Uh, it's something I treasure deeply uh, for the catharsis of actually writing and learning more about uh, music in general uh, and experiencing what it's actually like to create it, especially in, with hip hop. It's, it's actually pretty, uh, it's, a, it's a long enduring process of actually editing and mixing and getting the, the vocals right and my patience just, I, I just couldn't, uh, writing was the, writing was the fun part <laughs> for sure. And, and obviously, you know, performing to some degree, but, uh, I was definitely more into, into writing and I was the kind of writer out of the group, uh, the kind of esoteric, uh, concept writer who everything had a purpose and, and meaning behind it or, or a double, double entendre if you're familiar with that uh, sort of concept but um somewhere along the way uh my long-term relationships started to hit the fan with uh my girlfriend at the time we were fighting more and more uh we always we had a a good sex life in the beginning but um it started to wane as we started to you know work more and more we weren't having sex as often and um I mean, you know, that might sound kind of like a vacuous uh, thing, and, and uh, it is to some extent, but I think to young couples, being able to uh, sexually express yourself is, is more important when you're younger, and, uh, you know, we were just fighting more and more, and uh, we had different ideas of what we wanted to do with ourselves. I think she wanted to you know, be more free and, and, and see uh, what... Uh, where other things had to offer, and I, I kind of saw the writing on the wall. Uh, I noticed she was starting to get friendlier with uh, other guys. Uh, I had trust issues and confidence issues all throughout the relationship that put a strain on the situation as a whole. So I definitely take responsibility for that. But either way, uh, this was my first love, and who I went to prom with, and you know, did all of the basic holiday stuff with, with the family as my first real long-term, uh, relationship. And, uh, you know, it wasn't the, it was, wasn't the worst, uh, experience or worst first girlfriend you, you could possibly have. And I don't think I was the worst first boyfriend a girl could have. And we definitely grow, grew out from it and moved on with our lives. And, uh, so, uh, she was out of the picture now, and uh, somewhere along the way, uh, when I lived at that house, I met my second girlfriend, and uh, she was a, more of a intellectual like I was, and uh, she was uh, into literacy, and uh, we, there was a chemistry that I really liked about her, but it was a short-lived relationship. It was, it was very uh, spontaneous. I just told her one day that I really uh, always liked her. We went to high school together as well. And um, we hung out at my old house that I lived at at the time and uh, hit it off. And uh, we dated for you know, a couple months. Uh, but uh, I, th I think she might have cheated on me. I'm not sure. Uh, then she had a child not too long after that. So it is kind of interesting to consider if I uh, stuck it out and tried to mend that relationship and fight fought harder for it uh, Maybe I I would have been a father with that uh, uh, Girl, but uh, I think both of us are thankful that that wasn't the case um, and uh, In the meantime, I was still trying to pursue music to some degree uh, but my lifestyle I think was starting to catch up to me. I was still experimenting heavily with different things and uh, nothing too crazy, too hard. I, I never done meth or anything like that or crack or uh, stuff of that nature. But I did like alcohol. I still was into boozing and uh, it was affecting my health. Um, but somewhere along the way, I started to um, develop 
more and more anxiety again, but in a health, ex uh, uh, in the apparatus of, of health, uh, I began to get more and more uh, uh, anxious and, and panicky and feeling trapped. Um, and uh, well, there was one day where I just kind of lay down on the floor and I just couldn't take it anymore. I was just having a full blown panic attack. I, I was convinced that my heart was racing out of my body at this point. And I started to have these episodes more and more and my anxiousness just continued to rise. I'm still working, uh, but I was floundering intellectually. Um, I uh, stopped making music. I was still I had gained even more weight in my relationship. I was up to like 230 pounds at this point almost. And somewhere along the uh, away, I, I decided to, to start getting into exercising. Uh, I think it was just because of the recommendations of how to deal with anxiety in general. And one of the things they always told you is, is to exercise. My dad was a he, he, he did basic training, and my grandfather actually served in, in Korea as well. So weightlifting was uh, always, uh, my dad would always uh, exercise, and he was an active guy, even though his uh, diet isn't the best. Um, so I always had uh, watched him, uh, you know, lift weights and, and, and kind of learn from that. Um, and so I started to take it more seriously and, um, and actually stick to it more. And I had a, uh, my best friend at the time, uh, he was the third friend out of our kind of trio out of uh, me and my deceased friend. And we would make music together and he was my, we were a, a kind of a duo and he had a bench press at his house. And so we started to work out together every day and started to try to eat better and, uh, um, I started to see the results slowly but surely that uh, that summer and uh, somewhere along the way though uh, I think because of our jobs we started to kind of drift apart um, uh, and, and started to hang out less and less but I still tried to keep up with the weightlifting at my parents house I decided to humble myself and really hunker down back at my parents uh, I couldn't handle the responsibilities of that house and I was clearly detrimental to uh, my friends like I, I, I was just I was definitely probably the immature one out of out of the group um, from my sheltered lifestyle growing up quite frankly um, so I humbled myself and went back back home and my family was going through some financial issues anyway and I wanted to help out and I couldn't really uh, do the house thing anymore so I moved back home and I think that kind of strained my relationship for a while uh, with that group because I, I was just focused on working and, and trying to help my family get through uh, their hard times and um, so there was that and like I said I, I started to get more and more uh, into uh, being anxious and, and having these uh, panic episodes and I finally decided that I just had to do something about it. I had to go get help. And so I got diagnosed with my anxiety disorder and I got, uh, you know, your basic generic, uh, antidepressants and started to take those. And, uh, you know, they, they did, uh, they did help to some degree. Um, I'm not against, uh, medication by any stretch but I uh, I am skeptical of the diagnosis and, and seeing it as an ends uh, I, I only took one prescription of it I didn't like how they made me uh, feel tired and I think it contributed in a lot of ways to actually make me more depressed about myself but I stuck with the weightlifting and it was actually starting to somewhat alleviate me because uh, you know if you're doing hard cardio or doing lifting heavy objects, you can't really think a lot about, uh, you know, your, your existential crisis, I guess. Um, it's kind of a, a good distractor, a deterrent away from uh, your anxiousness. 
you know, that sort of movement, that, that stimulation of the mind uh, from the body. Uh, and, uh, and I think that is a big takeaway maybe to, to for why someone should just um, get into exercising, not just to be vacuous and look good. You know, that, that's nice. But it, it's the benefits of, of clearing one's mind that I think is the real gift. And... Uh, Somewhere along that time, my third and fourth girlfriend kind of uh, snuck in there, and um, I kind of traded back and forth between the two. Um, one of them I did actually take towards uh, Christmas and my holidays, and we dated uh, for a number of months, but uh, she ended up cheating on me, and I was finished right then and there. I had already started to get more of a backbone as I was maturing now and I just didn't put up with it and I said this was this was it and uh, there was a distance to the relationship and her sort of defense uh, I am kind of skeptical of uh, you know distance can can strain and if you're not there in those vulnerable moments then uh, other men will be um, but uh it was about that time that I started to get more into politics again. And this kind of goes with, uh, you know, the rise of, of the anti-SJWs and, and the SJWs and Gamergate and obviously 2016. And I started to write again and, 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 and write political essays on, on my social media uh, sites and even to some degree my, my page even uh, when I would occasionally try to boot it up again. And um, during this time, I, I really started to look back at my days in academia, and I, I started to, to realize how, how similar it really was to me to my religious experience in Catholicism at the local church. And uh, I always have this high feeling when I'm in these group settings, and I felt like I was being pressured into this politics of resentment. And I think obviously if one can look at my experiences in, the, in this autobiography, you know, I think I've demonstrated how, uh, you know, I, even when I was a, a, a leftist and, and, and a Marxist, um, you know, I was always really into, into the actual class uh, structures and, and and trying to come to an understanding of, of classism because I, I uh, you know, I grew up uh, with a very uh, poor uh, white father uh, with an even poorer white family. And I had that uh, sort of middle class and upper middle class uh, history with my Latino side of the family. And so these sort of racial dialectics that were starting to prop up didn't really impress me. I wasn't satisfied with it, even as a leftist. And slowly but surely, I started to look around and I started to see these uh, these movements, these uh, um, starting to to come about, and uh, this racial antagonism towards uh, white people, and and even being uh, you know I had this manager uh, friend at work. And she was telling me how she thought, uh, you know, wouldn't it be great if we had less of these uh, valley white girls around and had more uh, brown people, more minorities. And I, I was totally against this because, well, I think it's just the self-assessment of, uh, you know, it wasn't just that one friend that uh, I knew who committed suicide. There's... Uh, uh, there's just a quite a number of classmates and, and most of them were white and uh, most of my friends growing up were who gave me a chance who was willing to, to to give me the judgment and the benefit of the doubt of actually trying to inquire on who I actually was even when I didn't believe in myself at all and it was usually white people and uh, growing up like I said about the alienation of being uh, multi-ethnic and, and not knowing Spanish and, and being in the Catholic uh, school system. Um, 
you know, I think that I, I, I had a lot of, uh, outsideness to me, uh, and I think that pushed me towards the, the, the sort of red pilling, uh, scenarios of, of, of the Gamergate era and slowly but surely working with, uh, becoming actually more highbrow with, uh, theory and starting to actually look more into thinkers and wanting to get into politics now and taking it more seriously. Uh, I started to uh, get into uh, capitalism and libertarianism and um, the Mises Institute and Hans Hopp and uh, you know, there's a, a bunch of YouTubers as well who would do as I do now and, and, and try to show you uh, texts that they found interesting that committed to their worldview and uh, yeah, I think that kind of really does it about uh, where uh, I'm headed and maybe not necessarily where I'm headed but where I came from and seeing my humble beginnings and what what can really change about a person you know as I look back it was pretty interesting to see how radically different I was from just when I was sitting at home by myself at 17 years old to trying to out drink everyone at parties when I was 19. And uh, I wasn't the, not, ne not nearly the introvert that I thought I was. I actually had this extroversion about me and wanted to actually share my knowledge and share ideas with the world uh, and uh, confronting um, confronting my anxiousness or at least enduring it and making the most of it and starting to actually blossom out my hobbies and and finding identity uh, but not in the kind of passive funko popo you know just sitting around buying merch uh, identity uh, i'm against that uh, it's the identity of actually finding uh, your own being finding art and and finding things that relate to you uh, and finding artists and great thinkers that thought similar to what you think and uh, actually branching out in that sort of uh, way. And I think that's really the theme I want to drive home here and conclude with this series is to say to not give up and there's always, uh, there's always enlightenment somewhere under some rock, uh, somewhere in, in the darkest of the dawn in that dusk uh, setting uh, there will always be some light somewhere and, and no matter how ugly the world might get to you no matter how you rationalize things and, and uh, the journey of, of where you came from um, the horrors and, and, and embarrassment and resentment and um, loneliness that you could really have in this world and, and how damning it could really all be and the pain that can come about from, from losing someone dear to you or letting someone down. In this case, my best friend, uh, I really felt like I, I, I truly let him down in a lot of ways. Um, I think that's really the main theme that I want to bring about to you guys. And hopefully uh, this series could help people realize that, you know, you're probably not as sophisticated as you think you are in your uh, social commentary. It's bridled with this personal experience and, and these inescapable narratives that we're always returning to. Uh, but that, this is uh, my life so far and I am proud of it and the direction I've gone. And don't forget that you know, people are watching. You can inspire people, you can lead. You can live the good life and, and actually think higher of yourself and, and actually strive towards beauty and, and the good. Uh, you might not think that you deserve it, but the people around you that you probably do love, and that's what it really is all about, is love. Trying to find it, trying to maintain it, cultivating it. The form of love is, is the strongest of all in my mind. And uh, with that, I, I think I'm done.
I hope you guys enjoyed this series. I, I had fun making it and unpacking and, and having some closure on some things and sharing this with you guys uh, means a lot to me. And I think after this series, we'll start moving on the uh, uh, other things such as uh, sexuality and uh, in an Aristotelian sense, perhaps. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of video ideas I have. Uh, but thanks for sticking it through with this uh, autobiography. I'll be getting back to my normal content. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it deep in my bottom of my heart.